Welcome to the Encephalitis podcast. I am delighted today to be joined by author Samantha Goodwin. Sam is a self-published crime writer from Leeds whose debut novel, Murder at Macbeth, was published just over two years ago. She's collaborated on a new non-fiction book with some of her fellow writers called Indie Writing Wisdom. And here is the said book. So buy it, people. There will be details. Um, but it offers insights and advice on writing and self-publishing. And I'm delighted and very grateful to say that the proceeds uh, from the book are going to be go going to the Encephalitis Society. So we're like doubly pleased. Um, Indie Writing Wisdom is dedicated to Sam's dad, who sadly passed away as a result of encephalitis in 2017. Um, and I really wanted to invite Sam onto the Encephalitis podcast because I think her story, I think her writing experiences and advice will really resonate uh, with many of our listeners who are interested in sharing their own experiences um, after encephalitis. And, and many of you who know me know that one of my passions is the stories that people tell post encephalitis. Um, you will be able to find links in the descriptions of this podcast for Indie Writing Wisdom and Murder at Macbeth. Um, so Sam, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, we'll cut right to it, Sam. Um, tell me, what is Indie Writing Wisdom about? What can readers expect when they read it? Sure. Well, it's a collaborative nonfiction book. Um, so what the vision behind it was is to kind of like pull expertise from 11 different authors from across the world. And um, so we're all kind of experts in different fields. Um, so we brought our knowledge together and there's a whole range of topics that are covered, right from motivation to get started, um, when people are like first starting out writing, um, through to plot, characters, editing, cover design. And then once you've actually got the book, when you're holding it in your hands, it's then all the stuff that happens afterwards as well. So book launches, marketing, um, if people want to get active on Bookstagram, which is Instagram for books, um, it covers everything right from the start um, through to actually making sales. That sounds amazing. I wish um, I'd had indie writing wisdom before I wrote my first book. Um, I'm sure it would have helped enormously. And um, I have to say, it re-inspired me. Um, the, the pandemic put, uh, I've currently got two signed contracts for books, both of which were due to have been finished last year and on. I think the publishers have given up with me, but um, one of them's nearly there. Um, another one of the uh, collateral damage, I think, of the pandemic. But certainly when I read your book, it certainly re-motivated and re-inspired me. Um, where did the idea come for uh, writing uh, Indie Writing Wisdom? So the idea actually came from my own experience as an author. Like you said, it's a book that I wish I'd had when I started out um, because it is a bit of a minefield when you're first starting and you know it, it's quite a big undertaking um, to write any a book of any length um, so you end up researching stuff online and there's there's lots of resources out there there's different websites different blogs but I couldn't help thinking it would be so much better if it was all just in one central reference book <laughs> you could just you know put poster notes in refer back to you when you needed to and it was all just in one place from people that you trusted um, so that's kind of where the idea came from. And then through launching my debut novel, I'd kind of made good connections with different authors on social media. So I've got to know different people, like, um, so the person who wrote the editing chapter is an editor, that's like her job, uh, as well as being an author. Um, the person who did formatting, she's a formatter, as well as being an author. So I'd kind of like grown connections and friendships with these people. And we just kind of thought, well, actually, it's a really supportive community. So we could kind of pull our resources together. And what kind of when I contacted people, I said, would you like to be involved? And especially when they heard it was for charity. They're like, that's a great idea. And we just thought it was a really good opportunity to kind of like share our knowledge with the next generation of writers. Oh, well, that's uh, amazing. Um, talking of the pandemic, I think you wrote this book, didn't you, during the pandemic? Um, it was was that something that took up lots and lots of hours and was it a tonic or, or, or was it a labour of love? It was a little bit of both. So we were all the different authors who contributed were in such different situations. So me and my husband, we were still working, but from home, we have 
um, a little child who was one at the time. So he was just in tow with us. <laughs> so that was a bit of a challenge. Um, so I was definitely writing in the evenings um, in those snippets of time when I could. Other authors, they were teachers. So they had to pivot to um, online learning at home. Other people were homeschooling. Some people had been furloughed. But I think what I found really inspiring and empowering about it is we were all in isolation around the globe in the UK, the US, Canada, the Netherlands, but we were all working together on something that was really positive because the news was just so bleak at the time. And it just felt really nice to be working on something that actually was a really good thing and that it was going to be helpful and it was going to make a change to people like who maybe couldn't have written their book without it. Um, and also having the side effect of helping encephalitis at the same time. So that's what kept me going. Oh, that's such a nice story. And to think, that all, as you say, all these people around the world were focusing in on this really, you know, one positive project. And I, I think it was important, wasn't it, during the pandemic that, you know, you had to try and find the positive where, where you could. We all suffered in, in a variety of different ways. Um, has writing, I mean, obviously we mentioned, you know, your debut novel, which was Murder at Macbeth as well. So is writing, is it, is it an escape for you or just something that you enjoy? What, what's your motivator to put pen to paper or, or, or tap away on your keyboard? Um, I really enjoy it. It's something that I've always loved doing ever since I was a child. So I've wanted to write a book since I was about five recently discovered um when I was five I used to write like spot the dog books and like <laughs> do my own little illustrations I think definitely writing is my forte not art they looked a bit like giraffes but um but yeah I've just always really enjoyed it and I do find it it's like just pure escapism because I love reading as well but like with writing you can just completely create the world that you're in and I just find that really amazing and it's just a really good outlet for kind of exploring all the different feelings that you might feel. Mm. You mentioned as well earlier that the proceeds are, are coming to the Encephalitis Society, which obviously we're, you know, very grateful for now more than ever. Um, you know, I think many people don't realise that uh, a lot of emergency funds were given, you know, during the pandemic year in 2020. But uh, but it's it's the years that follow this year and the next year that I think are going to be hardest for charities like ours. So we're very grateful. But it's written in memory of your dad, Graham. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what happened to your dad? Sure. So my dad, Graham Finity, um, he was someone who was very suddenly struck down with encephalitis. And so went to hospital the same day, never really regained full consciousness after that first day, um, not properly. Um, we, were, we fell into the statistic of people not knowing what it was. We had never heard of it before. Um, even the doctors thought it was a stroke for quite a while before finally picking up on it and realizing it on the scans and was like, oh, actually it's encephalitis. And we were like, is that good? And they're like, well, actually, no, it's a, it's a really awful disease. Um, in some ways it would have been easier if they'd had a stroke. Um, and with dad, he went downhill very quickly, um, lots of seizures. Um, and then, yeah, he was just in hospital from that day for about six weeks, um, at which point, um, it, it died very peacefully, but um, yeah, we it just completely threw us because he was totally fine one day and then just wasn't the next. And it was this disease we'd never heard of, um, which is why like, I'm very passionate about kind of like raising awareness and kind of just raising understanding of the symptoms and just so people kind of like know what to do in that scenario, I guess, and think, oh, actually, it might not be a stroke, like, have you checked for other things? Um, yeah, that's our story. Yeah, I was talking to someone um, the other day, uh, you know, you talk about uh, the difficulties in diagnosis and and I remember talking to this family and, and the, doc the doctor said to them, oh, it, you know, it could be a stroke, um, it could be a brain tumour or it could be encephalitis. And, and the family said to me, they said, well, we, we'll take that one, we'll take the end one because we've never heard of that. And the doctor looked at them and, and said, you know, that's the last one that, of the three that you want to choose. Um, so, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I'm sure that he'd be super proud of you, um, actually. Um, and I'm sure that he's, you know, if he is watching, he's thrilled that there's a, a book written in his memory now. Um, I know he was a big supporter of yours and really encouraged you to write your first book, um, Murder at Macbeth. Um, the title is very evocative, I have to say. What can you tell us about Murder at Macbeth without giving too much away? Oh, 
yeah like as you say it ended up being the last conversation I had with my dad that I was going to write this book so it very much was kind of finished as a tribute to him so Murder by Macbeth it's um a crime mystery novel and um, it basically focuses around talented young actress who unwittingly stabs herself live on stage um with a prop knife that is tampered with and then she's kind of got a very eclectic band of um, castmates around her and they kind of form the main suspects. So it's a bit like a closed room mystery, but Agatha Christie in style. Um, and the two detectives um, who are kind of investigating, they kind of take one person at a time. They kind of like each tell their different versions of the story. And it slowly kind of like weaves through um, different twists different like plot reveals and you kind of start to build up a picture of what happened and it's there's lots of twists and turns so it kind of takes the reader on a bit of a journey whilst I'm trying to like be one step ahead of the detectives to work out who it could be. I'm gonna to have to buy it now that's that sold it to me I'm afraid. Um, why did you choose the Scottish play as they as they call it um, for your book's background? So there's a few reasons like I think it works really well as kind of the backdrop because there's a lot of themes in that play that kind of mirror what was going on off stage. So things like power, betrayal, guilt. And um, also it's a play I'm very familiar with. I was actually in a high school production of it myself. And um, so some of the things that are woven into the book was stuff that actually happened on that production. Not the murder, I'd hasten right. to it. <laughs> um, yeah, one thing I would say is you, don't, you don't need to be familiar with the play to enjoy the book. Um, but if you are a Shakespeare fan, there's kind of some hidden little touches that you might appreciate things like the chapter titles or kind of quotes in the play that kind of do really effectively mirror kind of what is going on um in that person's perspective so that was my rationale oh my god it sounds so clever i'm i'm envious I, i'm afraid i i've i can't even imagine um writing something like that i can write um academically um uh, but no, that sounds fascinating. I, I don't think I'm bright enough to come up with all the plot, plot twists and turns and things. But um, yeah, I envy you. Um, is there going to be a follow up to Murder at Macbeth or are you going off? I mean, is, is there a follow up book um, or are you writing something else? Are you going off in a different direction? What's the plan for Sam? I definitely like there to be a follow up. Um, a lot of my readers kind of expressed they really loved the detective duo um, who were investigating. They kind of had their own, alongside what's happening um, in the investigation, the, the detectives had their own stories that were kind of being told alongside it. Um, and I was, try, I was trying really hard not to like write cliches. So like, especially, especially the detective sergeant who is kind of like supporting the DI. She's called um, Nadia Zara and she's just a really strong woman character. And I don't think you get a lot of that in crime fiction. So a lot of uh, my readers kind of really responded to her. It was like, she's amazing. Like, we want to hear more about them. Um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to work out kind of like what that looks like. But I definitely like to continue the series and kind of bring those detectives back. Oh, that sounds amazing. Um, you know, time and again, we hear that personal stories from our members um, are very helpful uh, for other people who are recovering from encephalitis. Um, and I think often they can, they can, you know, part of their attraction is people are looking to see what the journey is that, that might be lying ahead for them. What are the difficulties? What are the little victories? Um, and I think also, you know, many people's stories, when you read them, it, it they're full of, you know, the human condition and, and that kind of indomitable spirit that people can demonstrate in, in the face of adversity. Um, there might be someone listening to this podcast who wants to tell um, their story. Um, do you have any suggestions for them when it comes to uh, writing their story, putting pen to paper? So my main bit of advice would just to be get started. Um, I think we can be our own worst critic and we can always come up with loads of reasons why not to do something and actually just getting started and um, I found it really cathartic and um, you know there was like emotions and grief that I was still feeling about my dad that I kind of wove into this book and it was a really good outlet for me that I could just kind of put those words in someone else's mouth and they could work through it and that really helped me and um, and also like when you first start writing don't don't get hung up on it being really good straight away. Like actually just getting started in the process is really important. There's um, a quote that I really love from an author called Shannon Hale. And she likens like writing a first draft to basically shoveling sand into a box to make sandcastles later. And I just really love that as a visual analogy. Like actually, yeah, that, that is exactly what a first draft is. It's messy and it's rough and 
it doesn't make a whole lot of sense but it doesn't matter because it gets the process going and it doesn't matter if you don't use what you write to start with like my very first chapters and character that I wrote for Murder at Beth I ended up cutting completely because I was like actually he's not as developed as the other characters the other characters really multi-dimensional and this, this person was a bit of a cliche so I was like no let's just get it out cut completely and it didn't matter because he's what got me started writing it and then it kind of developed from there um, and also you mentioned like putting pen to paper so like for me I literally did that I wrote an entire novel by hand no. um, and typed it up as I went um, but for me I just found my ideas like flowed so much more naturally if I literally sat with a pen and paper and just kind of wrote like that and then obviously as I'd written a few pages I then typed it so I didn't have an entire handwritten thing at the end but for me I found that really useful I knew I know other authors who write like on their phones like on the bus on the way to work and stuff so it's just about finding what works for you and kind of embracing that and yeah just give it a go you never know what might happen oh that's amazing I can't believe that you wrote it by hand my lord (laughs) it wasn't the best move to be honest because I kind of was doubling the time but for me it just worked a lot better that way wow what what would you say to people who who might be listening to this and who are daunted at the prospect of of writing a novel or writing their story or whatever it might be? What what would your wise words be uh, to those people? Because I think some people lack, in my experience, I think some people lack confidence. Yeah. Um, so it can be quite, it can feel quite overwhelming when you start when you, you've just got a blank page in front of you and you're like, oh my goodness, where do I go from here? And what I found really helpful was just to break it down and be like, right, I've got an entire book, but I'm just going to think about this chapter. And within this chapter, I'm just going to think about this scene. And within the scene, I'm just going to think about this paragraph. And the analogy that I always use when just in life, when something feels really overwhelming is if you've got like a huge pile of rocks in front of you and you're like, oh my goodness, I can't move this. It seems impossible. I can't do it. But then it's like, no, look at it again, work out which rock you can move one at a time and then just start from there. Um, and also the reason I think I put off writing a book for so long it's something I've wanted to do since I was a child and I think the reason I didn't is because I had in my head that you have to be a full-time author to write a book and that is just not true and once I'd kind of reframed my mind into thinking right how can I how can I get writing to fit around my life as it is right now then suddenly everything started to fall into place so for me it was about identifying the pockets of time that I had and you know I didn't make it easy for myself I was working full-time and I was pregnant at the time when I wrote this um, but I was like I've got 30 minutes in the morning before I go for work and I have an hour lunch break which I can just go sit in a park eat my lunch and write whilst I'm eating and as soon as I started to kind of own those little pockets of time without it taking over my life just fitting into my life it all kind of started to work and came together and you know it you can be a master of your own deadlines. You're not having to meet any publisher deadlines at this point when you first start writing your first piece. So you can do everything on your own time scale and not have to worry about getting things done by a certain time. Because progress is progress. It doesn't matter how, how long it takes. You're an inspiration, Sam. That I think that's you know great advice. And I, I think you know that when you talked about the pile of rocks and things, I think it is so important. Um you know increasingly people can feel overwhelmed with stuff and I think you know it is just about I, I I had feelings of it yesterday I've got so much work to do at the moment and I just kept my inner voice was saying just do one thing <laughs> just do one thing at a time and then move on to the next thing and it was the it was the only way I could uh, get through the day um is there any other advice that you would share about uh, writing um, with anyone that's listening? So I think for me, it's really important to write the book that you want to read and um, because not everyone's going to like it, but that's OK, because not everyone likes the classics. That's fine. And um, I'm a big believer that there is an audience for lots of different types of writing, whether that's nonfiction, writing, blogs, short stories, you know, telling your personal stories, as you mentioned. I think it's all about working out what it is that you would want to read. And then that's how you can write effectively, because then you'll kind of attract those people. And then um, the Internet has made it so much more accessible as well, like the reach of, you know, influencing other people has been 
you know, transformed overnight, really, hasn't it? Because I remember when I launched um, Murder and Macbeth, and like a few weeks afterwards, there was like a 20 year old librarian from Iowa who contacted me on social media and was like, I loved your book. I stayed up all night to read it. And I was like, you know what? If I don't make any other sales, that that's me done. I, I, all I wanted to do was for someone somewhere to love it so much they stayed up all night. And um, and you know, it's just incredible to see like on social media, like people in different countries and different states, like reading something that you've written and having an impact on them. Like with indie writing wisdom, it's so amazing to hear people being like, oh, it really helped me like release my first book. And I was like, fantastic. That is all that we wanted to achieve. Um, and also I would say to people listening, just to enjoy it. Like writing is a really good hobby. And I think sometimes we get a bit too hung up on the results, but actually you would never like paint thinking I need to sell this painting. Like sometimes it's just painting for the enjoyment and like writing for enjoyment is really important as well. So it's really good to enjoy the process. Yeah, I think that's that's um, really important. Um, yeah, I think we sometimes, certainly talking from personal experience, I think I can spend a, a lot of time trying to get to a place, whatever it might be. Um, and actually, I don't en- I don't enjoy I don't take the opportunity to enjoy the process. Um, uh, you know it's like that thing where they they talk about people are so busy trying to photograph on their phones a moment in time that you don't actually see it yourself um so that's something that I'm trying to learn and trying to be um better at so I think that's really uh really important is to actually enjoy it um we're coming towards the end of this podcast, um, very sadly, but is there anything else that you'd like to say or that you wish that I'd asked you um, before we uh, before we finish up, Sam? I suppose one final thing for anyone listening who wants to give writing a go, and this is something I wish someone had told me when I first started, is that you don't have to do it alone. Like, I think writing has a reputation as a profession that is very solitary. And it's like, I need to do it all by myself. But actually, nowadays, more than ever, such great ways of connecting with like-minded people online. Um, So be that online writing groups, in-person writing groups, there's retreats, there's festivals. um, There's even people who do online writing sprints. So they have a group and they say, right, guys, tonight, eight o'clock, we are all going to log on and we're going to write for an hour and then we're going to have a glass of wine together. And like I kind of discovered all of this after I'd written it. I was like, oh, this would have been a lot easier because... Then you've got people cheering on, cheering you on um, and kind of like in your corner, kind of saying, yeah, we can do this. Um, so I think like definitely do give it a go. It's really great. Um, you never know where it might lead you. And I'll say if you can try and find like your writing tribe as such, that also really helps. Um, brilliant. I did not know that. I did not know that there were online groups who were writing for an hour and then having a glass of wine. How wonderful. Sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> right? Especially with so many people, you know, having been stuck in their homes and what have you. What a great way to connect with other people. I absolutely love it. Um, we've covered an awful lot. Uh, we're deeply grateful to you, Sam, for taking the time to talk with me today. Um, just for anybody that's listening, just a reminder that the encephalitis uh, services um, uh, remain open. If you need any support or information, our teams uh, continue to remain at your service, of course. Uh, go to encephalitis.info for contact details or indeed to chat online with any of the team. Um, we hope that you've enjoyed this podcast. And as always, if you can support our life saving work, then we would be extremely grateful. Please visit encephalitis dot info forward slash donate if you can and the last thing to say is get writing people and also don't forget to buy murder at macbeth and indie writing wisdom thank you sam thank you very much